This is going to be the first in a series of misadventures in other countries that I had. Uh, the purpose of this is to help you to learn from my mistakes, but also maybe be amused a little bit by some of the crazy situations I got myself into in other countries in South America and also in Asia and Europe. Um, and that's the basic purpose of it. But what's interesting is I'm going to be telling this in English now, this story, just the way it happened to me. But if you check on my Spanish channel, I'm going to be telling the same story, the same video, but in Spanish. It won't be a translation of it. I'm just going to tell it from the perspective uh, thinking in Spanish. So if you're a Spanish student, that could be interesting for you. Look for the link to that Spanish version under this video, under this video uh, and you'll be able to go there and watch it having known the story now in English you can hear it again in Spanish or do it however you like this happened in 1987 and it was uh, a time when I went to Colombia I was 23 years old and I it was the first time I went to Colombia I traveled to Bogota Colombia the capital which is up at a high altitude so it's kind of cool up there all the time it's sunny and the Sun is strong but it's pretty cool I had no experience with this before the, the only other place I had been to before that was Spain and um, it, that's it's obviously not the same thing uh, Colombia is right on the equator part of it so things are a lot different down there which i was going to find out pretty soon after this and that's what this misadventure was so i got the directions how to go to the place i was supposed to go to which was not in bogota it was in a place called melgar and melgar was about two hours from bogota but in an area they called tierra caliente uh, which translates to like hot land and uh, it was, it, that land was very hot, which I was kind of strange for me to go from Bogota, which was cool in the 60s and all year long. I kind of knew that I heard about that, um, but when you're close to the equator, the temperature is determined by your altitude, not by seasons of the year. There really are no seasons, except they might say rainy season and dry season. I got the directions how to go, and I was I tried to communicate. And back then, remember, it was 1987, so there was no internet. And so we were writing letters back and forth, waiting three weeks to get an answer. And if the answer wasn't clear, you know, in an email, you could like clear things up. It's amazing how life has changed. I had to wait three weeks to get an answer that might not even have told me what I was looking for. And in fact, it didn't. So finally, I got a phone number because we were getting close to the date that we were going. This was in uh, late September, October. I was like freaking out. I'm not getting the information. You know, I was so used to having a, a hotel and everything all prepared ahead of time, knowing the numbers, the time, the day, everything organized. Finally, I got a phone number and I call up and I'm like kind of panicked. I'm talking to the minister down there and I'm like, hey, Eduardo, you know, I'm coming down. Oh, and back then to call on a phone internationally, it was like a dollar a minute. And that just starts ticking by really fast. And what made it worse is he was speaking really slowly and relaxed and I'm all panicked. And the whole time he's saying, Tranquilo, Marcos, tranquilo, Marcos, you know, be calm, be calm, Mark, be calm. And I'm like, uh, stop saying that. I'm not calm. Just give me the information I need. And it was because they they weren't, uh, they were very relaxed about it and they did work everything out in the end. But it was also part of what caused the problem that I'm going to tell you about the misadventure. And I get to the bus station, I go up to the ticket window and I ask this bus, um, I'm looking for this bus to go to Melgar. And the person is kind of like dismissive and mm, like impatient. Uh, you know, kind of like, hey, yeah, it's right over there. It's right over there. That's the bus. And I and so and I'm asking more questions like so this is definitely which made it worse, I guess, maybe. But I'm trying to make sure that I have the right information. I said, so this is the bus that definitely goes to Melgar. I'm going to this place called Kafam. That was the name of the vacation center there in Melgar, in the town of Melgar. He said, yes, that's it. Like I was annoying him. I sit down and I'm waiting waiting for about an hour or I don't know how long for the bus to 
finally comes. So I, 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 of course, the whole time I'm sitting there, I'm like nervously watching the bus and I see that people start to go on the bus. So then I go over again. I ask the man collecting the tickets or checking the passengers. I said, this is the bus that goes to Melgar. And he says, yeah, this is the bus that goes to Melgar. I was like, all right. So I get it. And the bus looked kind of shabby. Like it had the tassels. It looked like the stereotypical uh, Colombian bus that had these colorful tassels. And so then we just start going down and the road is going curving back and forth. And the driver, and there are only two lanes and like a passing lane in the middle. And the driver was sometimes passing another bus on a curve where you're not supposed to pass, like a blind curve. And I was praying and I just, after a while I said, you know, Father, this is in your hands. I'm just gonna stop looking out the front window. And I started looking out the side windows and enjoying the view because I thought, you know, if we get in a crash, there's nothing I can do about this. So, and he's going back and forth and back and forth. It's just going and going and going downhill for, it felt like maybe 20, 25 minutes like that. And then finally and abruptly, we just get to a point where all of a sudden the road gets flat. It just gets flat like, like a pancake. And we're just going flat. And on both sides of us are um, plantain fields or banana fields. I think there were plantains though. So those big leaves, those big green leaves, like a wall of them on both sides of us, all the way down the road. And you're just driving through this wall of all these beautiful, big green plantain fields. And um, oh, and so in Bogota, it was kind of cold. So I still had like a sweater on and maybe a jacket. Uh, but I think I just, in the bus, I just had this big sweater on and a t-shirt underneath it or a shirt or something. So I was dressed pretty warm. I noticed the other people, we picked up a few people on the way and I noticed the other people start taking their shirts and stuff off. I mean, their jackets and sweaters off. And I'm thinking, no, I'm still cold. We just left Bogota and it was cold there. And I wasn't thinking of the warm air that I was starting to feel in the bus. I was just thinking it's cold. It, it, it can't be warm. Um, but... <laughs> Uh, it, it was weird to the changes. So, but meanwhile, outside, it was probably 95 degrees and there was no air conditioning or heat in the bus. And, uh, but I just couldn't think that the weather was going to change so fast. It was a strange experience. So we're going and going and going and going and really beautiful, but straight, just a straight road. And I'm wondering, when are we going to get to, I knew it wasn't too far, but I was wondering, when are we going to get to, you know, the right bus stop. Whenever you take a bus in a foreign country or even in your own country, you always wonder, are they going to leave me at the right bus stop? Um, and you have this weird dilemma. You don't want to bother the dr bus driver, right? Because they always seem impatient, like, yeah, leave me alone. Check your map or yeah, we'll be there. Uh, or are they going to be friendly? Uh, ask one of the other passengers, something like that. Well, anyway, after about 25, about a half an hour on this um, road or maybe a little bit longer, the bus suddenly stops and it stops on the side of the road oh and it was just two lane highway like we would call it a country highway uh, in the u.s probably just two lanes no big shoulder or anything and on the other side of the road opposite from where it stopped there was like a little stand that had like food in these bags it had these little crunchy food like just snack food and drinks and i thought um Oh, we stopped to get food, to have a little break. But then um, we're there for more than like 10 minutes and the bus driver is off the bus. And then I noticed that all of the passengers eventually all get off the bus. At first I thought they were getting off to get a drink or a snack, but then they're all just standing next to the bus and I'm the only one there. And now I'm feeling hot. I'm feeling pretty hot. So finally I take off my sweater. I realize, wow, it's 95 degrees. It's really hot and humid. <laughs> And um, so I get off the bus and I'm, I see all the people standing there. And I said um, to somebody, what happened? You know, we're all speaking Spanish. And they said, and I had never heard this expression before. They said, se pincho la llanta. And I'm like, se pincho la llanta. La llanta. Oh, that's tire. Um, but se pincho. I wonder what that is. And then I looked and I saw what se pincho means. It means that the tire went flat. Se pincho la llanta is the tire is flat. It got a flat tire, something pincho, something poked it and, and made the air come out. 
and they couldn't continue. So then I said to the bus driver, so is another bus going to come and pick us up? And he's like, hmm, what? Mm, that doesn't happen. I said, can, is there a place where I can call for a taxi? And he said, a taxi out here in the middle of here? And I'm looking at the other people and they all seem like they were, I don't know if they had, no, no, we didn't have cell phones back then, but they all seemed kind of like annoyed, but they were taking care of it and finding a way to get out of there. So now I'm thinking, man, I'm stuck in the middle of Columbia and I don't know how to get out of here. And the guy says, um, well, where are you going? And I said to Melgar, Kafam. And he goes, oh, it's right there. <laughs> and almost across, but up like about one and a half blocks, there was a street entrance. And that was the entrance to to Melgar. So the bus broke down <laughs> right where I was basically supposed to get off, but I didn't know and it didn't really look, you wouldn't know it to look at it. So I get all my luggage and I overpacked. I had way too much luggage. I had like a garment bag back then carrying suits and my, and my suitcase and then a carry-on. I think I had three things. It was ridiculous. 95 degrees and I start walking. I was like, all right, thanks. And I'm, I start walking and I just go there. I cross the little highway. This is crossing the street and then walk over there. By the time I got that block and a half, I'm like starting to sweat a little bit, right? And I'm starting to feel it. And um, I see a little kid on a bicycle and I'm like, do you know where Kafam is? He's like, yeah, up there, two blocks, three blocks down. So I walk another three blocks. I get to the entrance. It was the entrance booth of this like private vacation center. Like inside they had all kinds of um, facilities for uh, games and swimming and hotels and cabins that you can rent and all kinds of stuff. I didn't know that. Um, but so I'm there and I'm talking to the lady and I said, uh, Mark Esposito. And she starts checking through this great big book. She's checking and checking and then she's really slow and I'm all nervous and I'm kind of sweaty. Did I come to the right place? Am I in the right town? So she, and now I have no transportation with my luggage in the middle of nowhere in Colombia. And so then she says, um, she gets to the last page and she says, sorry, you're not in my book. <laughs> I was like, what? I said, could you please check it again? I said, Mark, Marcos. And then I spelled out my name. Esposito. So she starts checking again and she's looking and she's looking. She goes, oh, here you are. So I feel like she just did it. It was like almost like she did it on purpose just to make me feel more nervous. So the woman tells me to go over and wait for the Chiva. I didn't know what the Chiva was. Uh, I didn't know at the time. Chiva is a female goat in uh, Spanish, um, but it's a type of bus. That's what they call it there. And it has no doors and you can enter the enter it to get into your seat all all along the length of the bus. It's like it's all open and it just has benches or seats in it and you can slide in. Almost like what you would see like transportation down in some theme park. The Chiva comes, I get on this bus and I'm the only one and it takes me and it starts driving through in this beautiful complex of uh, manicured landscaped grass and parks and fields and ponds and streams. There was like a, a hotel and then there were cabins. It just looked really beautiful. And the, the plants and the bushes were all colorful, things I had never seen before. It was just, it was so cool. It was really exciting. And um, so then it comes up to a place and it pulls up and stops. And as it pulls up, I see there's a huge, big, fancy bus and people are getting off of it. And it's an air conditioned bus. And I see all the people getting off and they all look nice and cool and fresh and no problem. So I get all my uh, luggage and I'm getting off completely soaked. I just look a mess. I'm just like dripping sweat and my shirt was just, looked like somebody hit me with a bucket of water. And uh, some of the Colombian people from my church are getting off the bus and they come over and they see me and they're like, Hey, are you, 
and they said, it's, I don't know if they spoke to me. Some of them spoke English, but some of them in Spanish. They're like, oh, Mark Esposito. Oh, you came from the United States? Oh, yeah, we were expecting you. Hey, welcome. And they're looking at me like, oh, what happened? And then I told them and they were like, oh, boy. So that was the bus I was supposed to get on. I was like, where was that bus? And I'm asking where the buses are. Anyway, so... The moral of this story is to make sure that you have someone to meet when you're supposed to take a bus, a train, a plane, whatever it, whatever it is. Please, in the comments, leave your stories of adventures that you had, not just in other countries, maybe in the US or in your country, uh, where you had an, a misunderstanding of the wrong bus, the wrong train, the wrong flight, whatever it is. Those are always kind of fun and interesting. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. Feel free to buy me a coffee and click on the link below to see the awesome one-on-one -on -one classes I offer. Click on my Amazon affiliate links to see the books that I personally use. Since you liked this video, you're going to love the next one.